Now let's take a look at exchange rate policy, the different types of exchange rates that exist on the market. The first of which is a flexible exchange rate. A flexible exchange rate is determined by demand and supply in the foreign exchange market without any direct intervention by the central bank. The rate is influenced by the central bank, for example, due to changes in the interest rate. This generally affects the exchange rate, but it's not a part of the central bank's objectives. It's rather a consequence. So if a, a central bank in a, in a flexible exchange rate may affect the exchange rate, but it's not doing so on purpose. A fixed exchange rate is determined by the decision of either the government or the central bank, and it's achieved by the central bank intervening to block unregulated forces of demand and supply. The central bank is not limited in terms of how much of its own currency it can sell, as it makes that currency, so it has un technically, theoretically, an unlimited reserve, but it is limited in terms of how much of its own currency it can buy by using its foreign exchange reserves. Intervention would have to stop if foreign exchange reserves ran out. If the exchange rate rises or falls permanently, eventually the central bank will have to abandon its attempts to maintain this fixed level because it won't have enough currency to do so. Let's say that we have this um, exchange rate uh, graph over here, and we're going to start off at D and S, demand and supply, and we're going to have it at the target rate. But now let's say that demand shifts down to D2. Then what's the central bank going to do? Well, it's going to try and increase the demand for its own currency by buying that currency up. So it's going to use its foreign exchange reserves to purchase its own currency back from the foreign exchange market, thus increasing demand and restoring target rate. But let's say that from our original equilibrium position, we move to D1. Then what happens? Well, what the central bank can do is it can sell its own currency to increase the supply and thus restore equilibrium. Keep in mind, the equilibrium that the central bank's looking for is only of the exchange rate. It doesn't really care about the quantity um, that's supplied. It, it really only cares about the exchange rate itself. A crawling peg is an exchange rate that follows a path determined by a decision of the government or the central bank. And again, it's achieved through central bank intervention. It works a lot like a fixed exchange rate, except that the target value changes. Ideally, the target value is the equilibrium exchange rate on average, but the peg seeks to prevent large swings in the expected future exchange rate that would cause large fluctuations in the exchange rate. If the target is set at something that's other than the equilibrium, then the central bank is unable to indefinitely maintain this new target because it would run out of reserves. So that's why, in a crawling peg, they try to, the, the central bank tries to achieve the equilibrium that an unregulated market would achieve, but it does so, um, it, it maintains that target, but it just prevents large swings in the changes of the exchange rate.